Hello, this is Cleantech Business Club once again in partnership with Euro Electric at their awards winning Power Summit 2022 in Brussels. We are together with uh, Jochen Hauf, uh, who is uh, strategy director at Beiwa, yes? Mm -hmm. Correct. And uh, actually, we are a bit uh, thinking about the past, yes, because we met mm -hmm. with Jochen the first time, I think, like 14 years ago or 15 years ago, when Jochen was working at uh, AT Kearney and he was helping actually the European industry to prepare set for 2020, yes, Jochen? Yeah, yes. That's, uh, yeah. it's nice that some people remember the history. <laughs> exactly. And actually, uh, so today uh, we are in the future, yes, because we are 20, 2022. So I would like to ask you the first question uh, how your forecast actually. Uh, worked uh, and uh, what is the final, let's say, result? Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, how would you compare the forecast uh, with what actually happened? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we didn't really forecast it in a, in a deterministic sense. We, we back then we just said what would be possible. Yeah, the mm -hmm. idea was solar was in all forecasts. They were it was like below one percent, mm -hmm. and it was our ambition and, and the work of this project together with Epia and uh, Carney to show that. 3, 6 or even 12 percent of solar PV contribution to the European um, electricity consumption would be feasible and under which condition would it be feasible. Yeah. So what we see now is that the 6 percent is within reach, Yeah. the 3 percent is certainly achieved um, and the 12 percent uh, that we called the accelerated or the paradigm shift scenario would have been feasible as well um, had we put the, uh, the right measures in place earlier and, and not in this protracted uh, version. So we, we can say we, we correctly forecasted that it will work without the system breaking down, mm -hmm. which back then was still uh, you know, an argument of the opponents, uh, that, that uh, all uh, chaos will break loose and the deindustrialization of, mm -hmm. of Europe will follow. So I think that we were correct in what we didn't estimate and didn't forecast correctly was the, the LCOE development. We, mm -hmm. we saw a, a steep decline in cost, but not to the extent we have actually seen it. So we were too conservative there. Um, like most of the people. Yeah. Like most of the people, yes, but so were we. Uh, we were not um, uh, better than that. Um, so I think, you know, the, the story overall fits and it's funny now the European Union's Repower Europe ambitious scenario for 2030 is pretty much what we wrote also would be possible in 2030 back in 2009. And to me, it's, you know, it's on the one hand, we're rewarding that we say, OK, look, we, we told you so. But on the other hand, it's yeah, fills me with sorrow and dismay that we didn't act on it earlier. It took a war in Ukraine and it took an accelerating climate crisis to finally make politicians uh, realize and accept that this potential is there where we could have been working towards that goal already for the last 13 years. Yeah. So there's a lot of time yeah. lost because uh, I think that in the past, uh, for sure, you know Tony Siba, yes, and uh, his job, yes, Tony yeah. Siba. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the past, we always had problems to explain to decision makers, to the industry, even guys, what is that we are disruption, mm -hmm. yes, clean tech disruption, disruptive technology. So it's not like, you know, transition, but it's more like a transformation. With the mm -hmm. COVID, uh, now with the war in Ukraine, I think people, they are more receptible, yes, for mm -hmm. the for the arguments, yeah, that during right. short period yeah. of time, you can dramatically change the landscape, yeah? Right. That, that's true, but it's also annoying that it takes these catastrophes and yeah. it takes these pandemics where you would think in a rational system, uh, we look at the cost, we look, we do the maths, uh, we, we, we sh look at the environmental situation, we, we, we trust the science and then we make, you know, responsible decisions. So I, I still somehow believe in this sort of uh, framework and, <laughs> and a value system. So I'm disappointed that it is yeah. the other way around. But at the same time, I'm, I'm businessman and um, now, so enough to seize the opportunity and that we say, okay, now, now let's use this yes. and let's, let's do the things we always knew we could do uh, in that sense. As quick as possible. It's a great, great opportunity, but at the same time, mm -hmm. as you are undoubtedly aware, obviously the risks uh, and uncertainties in the supply chain um, uh, are also there. So the crises that help to catalyze development exactly. but now are we also to having also an impact. We have challenges, yes? We have challenges. We have soaring steel prices, we have, we have the logistical challenges, um, uh, we have also COVID, people orienting th their lives away from exactly. driving trucks, yeah? and all of a sudden we have bottlenecks in all sorts of uh, areas where we wouldn't have um, foreseen them, and that is making the rollout now yeah, more cumbersome. Um, at the same time, we're still, you know, we're, we're serving clients on a daily basis, we're building projects, 
like this, um, uh, and we are um, so we can make progress. You are, but the you progress are one of the, of the leaders, space. yes, also. Yeah, I mean, we, we are now 3,500 people globally, 100% focused on renewables, not only solar, uh, but uh, but on wind and uh, solar in 30 countries. Uh, and yeah, and it's great. It's a, it's a you know it's a company where every day everybody there comes in and it's 100% renewable energy. So I, I assume, uh, Johan, that uh, when you were working like an expert for Epia at that time, mm. no, you must get excited about the industry. That's why you changed. Yes. And to join the industry, yeah? Yeah, partly. I mean, back then, the, the Epia project, and I'm still thankful uh, to the people back then that enabled it, were, was, an, Just was my jumpstart into yeah, solar. Yeah. And then I have advised a number of not only solar companies, also utilities, trying to convince them that solar is a good idea, which wasn't easy in 2009, 2010. Yeah, they, they were fighting back, pushing yes. back, laughing at me. I remember workshops where I was basically laughed out of the room uh, for, pre for pre uh, presenting PV as a strategic option for a major utility that runs a lot of plans this has changed yeah it's um, amazing that today we are together with utilities yeah yeah I mean they came around they see they see the the, the, the rationale and it's good and and I had uh, worked as an advisor to them uh, also so and many people did so obviously that the slowly the truth comes <laughs> comes uh, to fruition and is out there uh, so that's good uh, at the same time yeah it's it's too little too late I'm I'm fundamentally still worried. If you look at my LinkedIn profile, you'll see I'm, I'm worried, yeah, and I'm upset because because we haven't got the speed uh, that is that science tells us is needed to solve the problem we set out to uh, to solve. And I decided to work in, in in renewable energy and energy back in 1992. Mm -hmm. So I have 30 years of <laughs> of knowing the problem and and trying to work on it, and I'm just. You know, running out of out of uh, lifespan, uh, and I don't see that. that we are the same age. age. <laughs> yeah. <all right. laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to give you a, a bad prognosis. <laughs> it's my my personal panic. And now I would like to ask you uh, about the future. Yes, mm -hmm. because today the topic is what are the okay. game changers which can help to accelerate this transformation. So, in a couple of valid points. First game changer certainly LCOE. Uh, going down, be staying down, and it's just clearly solar and wind being the cheapest uh, um, source of electricity. And with that also, the, the absolutely go-to resource for creating green hydrogen. So I think the, the low cost uh, of generation is something we absolutely need to you know, guard, safeguard and continue to drive cost down, even though uh, there are supp supply chain challenges. No, that was more than a bullet, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, but it's important. The other one, I would say public acceptance. Yeah, we have to uh, ensure that we don't lose touch with, um, with, the popu with the customers, with the population, also those who are not customers, but who, who have to look at this stuff. Exactly. Yeah? Uh, windmills more prominently, but also large-scale solar plants. So designing our plants in a way that they, that they uh, are acceptable and, and socially acceptable but also you know uh, aesthetically pleasing enough or provide double double benefits like like these sort of examples where mm -hmm. where farmers can actually see a purpose for themselves in it lose from from electricity I think that's an important one so LCOE acceptance and last one yeah ambition uh, it's it's uh, we need to uh, have the ambition to go bold, to to say we can do it, to um, uh, ask investors to give us the working capital needed, uh, to tell politicians they can rely on us as a sector, mm -hmm. and then uh, we can we can still accelerate, mm -hmm. um, and then maybe there is still in this closing window there is still a, a surprise for me, uh, yeah. to make me an optimist again. So Johan, you were mentioning that you are following uh, my LinkedIn yes and the post, and you notice a lot of together we are stronger yes, which is our spirit of the club. Okay. So I would like to ask you if you can elaborate on that, how this together we are stronger is important, especially now with all the geopolitical changes that are happening in the world. To me, it's, an, it's a no-brainer that together we are, we are stronger. I believe in, in, in teams doing good things, pooling diverse minds in order to, to come up with better solutions. I think that is true in the small sense, in the team uh, set, as it is in, in, in larger, in a corporation or in a society. Um, uh, and as we have seen now, you know, a, a, a crisis that hits us, brings us closer together and maybe catalyzes again um, uh, the power that, that together we, um, we get it done. So yeah, I like the motto, I, I, I live after it. Uh, uh, and and um, 
good that you picked that up as a it's a good it's a good guiding light as a so model. last but not least uh, let's finish interview with our flagship sign for cleantech <laughs> and also for utilities yeah. who are now finally understood that they need to transform into clean technologies wow. thank you so much thank you thank you <laughs>